Good afternoon folks, hope you're doing well. I'm out here with a new tent, a bit, a couple of bits of new gear actually. Uh, it's a bit of a beast, as you can tell. I've got lots of gear in my backpack. There's more gear inside this tent bag as well. There's a stove, uh, a um, outdoor stove as well. And I've got a wood stove over there. It's, it's a lot of gear. I'm not used to this much, but I figure it's quite nice to have quite a comfortable camp every now and then. This is the first time I've ever set this tent up. I've never done it before. It's my first time using uh, an air tent on the channel. I've got no idea how it's gonna go, but without further ado, thank you for watching and let's get camp set up. So this doesn't come with the tent. This is actually a separate stove, outdoor fire pit, sorry, that Winnowell has sent me. We'll do that in a bit, get that set up. This thing is massive, folks. <laughs> This is probably the biggest tent I now own. I think it's a one, it says one to six person. Um, it's certainly a luxury camp for one. I've never, I've never done this before. I don't know what I'm doing in here. Get all the components out. That's fairly straight, self-explanatory. That's how we pump it up. Love to go pump it up. No, too early. Whoa. Instructions here, from the looks of it, of how to set it up. Always nice when that's on there, on the bag. The pegs and an air, re the uh, repair kit for the air tubes. This is massive. Without doubt, the biggest tent I have owned. It's a monster. Oh man, let's find these air tubes. So according to the instructions, it says lay the tent out, which I've done, and then peg in four corners of the tent, which I will do next. And then it says there's two inflatable valves, choose one, close one valve, keep one open, and then pump air into it. Nice heavy duty pegs for a change. I didn't bring a mallet, but it's very soft ground today here, so <clears throat> we should be okay. I'm not going to peg that bit, I'm going to peg the bottom bit. Yeah, that goes in easily with my hands. Let's do the rest. So I've closed one valve off, and I've found the other valve. The one-way valve bit, this, sorry, this bit, so... Yeah, doesn't let air back out. This is the bit where you always pray that you've got the valve, the valves right. Yes. <laughs> cool. So that took 10 minutes with filming. Filming around, moving the camera. Not too bad. Let's adjust the pegs. All along the edges on the the kind of rain skirt here are these heavy duty nylon webbing straps with a D-ring at the end. So I got to tension all this out, put those in. Um, so there's also a skirt, there's the kind of waterproof PVC, I guess, waterproof bathtub bit, but there's this skirt here as well. And it's got these D-rings which can hook onto the top of the pegs, or at least I'm gonna hook them on the top of the pegs like that. Just makes it easy. Oh, 
How cool is that? It is like it is literally like an inflatable house. They've even got like windows with slats in them. Webbing to make it look like a house window. That is really cool. I do like these uh, nice big tensioning straps for the rain skirt there. That was the first time putting up an inflatable tent. That was actually way easier than I thought it would be. So cool. Got these guy lines here as well, which I guess are for when it's a really windy day and you want to get everything pegged down, being inflatable. It's probably going to be catch the wind a bit, but I'm not going to use these tonight because you, I don't know if you can tell there's zero wind in the air. It's actually quite a mild day, but it is going down to five degrees tonight, I think, Celsius. So we are going to have a wood stove. Right, let's have a look inside. I've got to say another really cool feature is these kind of zip on covers that go over the skylights. They're like a skylight. So this one has the mesh on there. I don't know how you get up there to roll it up. You must have to open it from the inside to actually be able to roll that up because I can't ring, I can't reach. But that's mesh there and the same over there. So it's like, you can see into the forest above, which I think is really cool. You can see the trees. They, they also, uh, it came with the tent, but I didn't bring it, have like a clear PVC uh, cover that goes on here. So you have essentially a window. So if it's rainy, you can still have it open and get light in there. But I haven't brought that with me today because it's not due to rain. On each corner, there are these little windows here too. So you've got a normal window, you've got a mesh if you want to keep the bugs out and let some light in and airflow. And then when it's bad weather outside and you want to hunker down, you can just zip up the main window from inside or outside. I like that. And that goes all the way along. Two windows there, loads on the front, loads on the back. Oh, there's, there's a mesh door there as well. We're going to keep this open for now, though. Buzzard. There's two buzzards over there. Oh, wow. It's massive. This is huge. For one person, this is ridiculous. For six people, you could sleep 15 or 20 people in a sleeping bag in here. It's massive. I can actually stretch totally up and touch the, uh, the air tubes. Here's where the stove goes. There's more windows there. So up here, there's a string like paracord that goes all the way along the ridge for hanging clothes and sleeping bags and things like that. It's all taut so you can just hang things. When the stove's on, everything up here would get dry. I really like that. You can see the whole airframe here. The mesh windows, which yeah, can be open from the inside. If you, if you want total forest. But we're gonna keep that shut today. Every single air tube in the, on the whole frame is a zip with a protective kind of Cordura case to it. And when you unzip it, I think it's so that if you have any punctures, you're able to get to wherever the hole might be in the air tube, which I think is, again, a great idea. You need to be able to get to everything in case you have a puncture. It would be a nightmare to find where it is though. But that's, that's really cool like that. I'm not sure on this. I don't want to press it, but it's kind of like an emergency valve or something to potentially to let a bit of... I wonder if this is for when it's really hot conditions outside and obviously the air expands in a tent when it's hot. And if that's for letting air out, I'm not going to play with that because I've just pumped it all up. And then down here is a tiny zip and a, a hole vent for putting in an air conditioning tube or a kind of diesel heater tube. So you can heat the tent via those as well. But again, I don't need that because the best bits are here. But here is the stove jack with a little heat resistant material here that's Velcroed on and it's secured to the tent. 
Um, but there's nothing on the floor here because I believe you need to get the RBM stove which has the protective mats on there or I've just not packed it. Actually, I might have forgotten it, you know. Either way, I've got a different stove with me today. So we're gonna set that up now. If you're wondering what tent this is, by the way, it's the RBM Outdoors uh, Panda Air Tent. And it was actually sent to me about six months ago by them, along with another one of their tents. And the, <laughs> I just haven't got round to using it until today. And I kind of regret that, because this would have been great in the winter, proper winter. But yeah, they got back in, they got in touch with me in like 2021, and I just never really, found their messages until a couple of months ago on Instagram. Um, they did send me a stove as well, a big stove for this tent and for the other one, but I didn't bring it with me because we're springtime coming into spring anyway, and it's only five degrees Celsius tonight. I don't think I need a massive stove, so I've just gone for a smaller one and I'll use the other big stove potentially later this year. Got a couple of extra stove pipe lengths which I'm going to put on here because it's quite a tall tent and I want this, the flue to be quite high so that any ash that falls on it, even though I've got a spark arrestor, any ash hopefully doesn't you know, burn it. <laughs> I've got this stove mat, heat mat as well, which goes with this stove here. So we'll put that down first. Right, we're set up with the stove for later this evening. Um, I'm going to chop firewood in a minute for the fire pit and probably cook outside and then maybe do some food or something on the stove here uh, in the evening. The old one tigress bed, really comfy. Had a number of good nights now on this. Something I do love about spring, the burden is. So the sun is, I think I've got about an hour and 15 of sunlight, of, of light left before dusk comes. It's nice now, with spring coming, it's starting to, the nights are starting to draw out and then the clocks will change soon. We get our evenings, which is so nice. Not having to fight the light with filming. But I didn't get here till late because my kids were sick the last few weeks. I had it, I caught the bug. It's like a really bad stomach bug. And then my wife has had it recently. And so I've just made sure everything is okay at home before I left. I'm gonna say I haven't been camping in ages. I, I did actually go camping last weekend with Steve, the state detective, and Mark from MDM Outdoor Adventures, and Andy from Kent Survival. Uh, we did a camp out, we didn't 
do any filming, any of us. That was actually one of the weekends my, my kids were sick. So um, I kind of went back home and then came back out to camp. It was, it was a funny sort of day, but it was really nice to, to camp with the guys. Hopefully we'll do some more stuff in the future and maybe actually film it <laughs> next time. I've got my new fire pit. I'm really excited about this. So the guys at Winnerwell sent me this. It's all very shiny. And actually, they didn't just send me a fire pit. I've got a look. I've got a. Uh, they sent me this. This like stainless steel table and some instructions. So everything is flat. And that is it. How quick is that? That's the fire pit. And then there's the grill. Like that. Done. <laughs> That's really cool. So where we had the camp the other day, I still have lots of firewood left over from it here in the woods. But it's kind of, we've already split it down, but I'm going to split it down a bit further to get it going. And because I was late today, it saves me having to saw it all up. It's quite nice to not have to saw the firewood all the time. So just split this a bit smaller. No bush graft today, because I'm late. Chopping up some wood for the wood stove later. Might as well do it now while I've got the axe. <clears throat> then it's just easy enough to, to fire up the wood stove. The fire pit's going well. Lots of air holes in it, so it gets lots of airflow. So it actually, it actually burns a really clean flame. Helps that I've got seasoned wood, but that is good. Got a little chair. I've packed, honestly, loads for this trip. And so many kind of minimal gear trips. It does make a change to do this type of camping. Oh, I didn't bring any beer. I should have brought a beer. Oh, aeroplane. Ow. 
Ow! <laughs> Twice! I might set these up in the tent to be fair. A couple of small tables. I've obviously got the winner well table as well, which I think I'll leave up here. I've got these little tables for indoors. So I might set those up by the stove, I think. We have brought the kitchen sink today, folks. Literally everything. Oh, this is like a TARDIS, that pack. Let's get these in. My camera! <laughs> you can just see the sort of sunlight starting to set over there. Oh, the sun's setting behind us. Lovely view. Bed, stove, and still so much space for activities. This one, I don't know if you can see, but it's basically a lantern holder, like that, but it sticks up here. We're not going to be going out of this door today, so that's all shut and zipped up. Oh, there's not much battery in it. No. Okay, see them off. Handy little storage pockets on the bed for like sleeping bag covers and my pump, pump bits in there. And there. For now, clear the mess. There's another pocket the other side, I think, as well. season the meat in a minute. I've got this little seasoning kit, spice kit, which is really cool. Um, got my kind of <clears throat> mixed spice there, which I tend to use for steaks and general meat. My salt, 
paprika, paprika, sorry, and cumin. They're the main ones I use anyway when cooking, but we need the salt and I'm doing boneless lamb leg steaks. So I'm gonna put some of this on it first. Little bit of oil in my uh, in my daughter's and my son's Tupperware box because I forgot my other oil thing. I'm cooking lamb, so lamb's quite fatty. It doesn't really need loads of oil. I'm saying that like I'm a chef, but I'm not, and I'm not a good cook either. Daddy. Yes, sweetie. Hey, have you seen any owls? I no, I can hear the owls though. I can hear them. Is it raining? Uh, no, we've had we've had a bit of rain, but a, a sprinkling. Are you are you filming on your friends? I'm not filming with my friends today. No, I'm filming on my own, sweetie. Daddy's on his own tonight. What are we doing tomorrow? Um, I don't know what we're doing tomorrow. Daddy will come home. Um. But look, do you want to see Daddy's tent? She's called right on cooking time, but it's because it's her bedtime. And I can't not speak to her then. Right, we've got garlic potatoes cooking. At the same time, I'm going to cook some lamb. So, every couple of minutes, look at that. I'm going to take these lamb steaks off and let them sit for a couple of minutes and then whilst the potatoes are still going I'm going to chuck in a bit of asparagus mix this up a bit so that is the dish I've got with me this garlic dip and some flatbread as well cheers folks that was very hard to cook <laughs> whilst talking to Eve Eve's my daughter, by the way. And it's really nice. Need some flatbread. Garlic dip. Garlic and chive, sorry. A lot of garlic in this dish. Garlic potatoes. Garlic and chive dip. I think what I'm going to do is... Let this fire burn out. It's actually getting a bit smoky now. Um, let it burn out and then bring everything in to the tent. Get the fire going in the tent, sit and chill. Maybe have a beer or two and a hot chocolate or coffee or tea. I'm not sure yet. But I'm going to get in the tent. It's definitely started to drop a bit now. Because it's bigger, I'm not going to get so hot like I do in the smaller ones when I have a uh, do a hot tenting night but it will still get nice and warm because it's got that A-frame and the heat must all just sit in the top. I'm looking forward to it. The moon looks amazing. Let me just show you before I bring the gear in. Looks so good. There's no damper on this <clears throat> up there. 
but I always have my damper open the valve anyway all the time when I'm using a wood stove and I like to control the airflow from here from the front air intake I think damper is more important when it's a really kind of windy day one near the back one near the front We're cooking. A little table here, a longer one actually, near the bed. Trusty carbon monoxide alarm. So I've got this little portable radio. Uh, a few months ago now, I got it. I can't remember where I got it. Amazon or something. It's got a solar panel on the top here, so it can kind of run via solar. Well, kind of keep the batteries charged during sunny days. Oh, and it's a light as well. I didn't realise that. <laughs> That's cool. So you can lift it up, and it acts as a light. There's another light there. I'm not sure how that. Well, it's got a US. Uh, it's got a DC in, so it can charge. That's why it's got a lithium ion there. Aerial on the back. This is my first time probably looking at it, guys. By the way, little lanyard and a crank handle to if it's low on battery. Crank it up. Oh, there's the light. There's a light button there. Let's turn that light on. So it's got two lights. There's a nifty piece of kit. <laughs> or any other institution and helping this country be run better. Belgian hot chocolate. Right, it's just about cooled down about 40 minutes later. <laughs> I've got my plastic cup, so metal it is. Oh, it's nice. So I'm probably going to let the stove, put one more log on the stove, and then it'll burn out. Because it's only 5 or 6 degrees Celsius tonight. And I've got my three season black bag, sleeping bag. So once I'm in that, I would get too hot, I think. Oh, is that a pheasant? Yeah, I get too hot. But it's been brilliant so far in terms of the stove area. I'm really pleased with that. And there's just so much space in this tent. I'm definitely going to use this more for family camping, this tent, and, and bring my kids and my wife in it and have like a big double inflatable mattress, bring the kids' beds in here and the sleeping bags, have a few more tables set up. And yeah, do some camping trips this spring and summer with them. Excuse me, 30% chance of rain tonight. Which in England can mean anything. That might mean 100%. So I've shut them down, zipped them up. So the tent's totally sealed now. Um, I might crack a vent or two. But I've got my carbon monoxide alarm anyway. Right, I've finished my hot chocolate. And uh, listen to a bit more radio, I think. Just heard a load of owls, got into my sleeping bag. I was sorting bits out of the tent and the owls kicked off. And I went to press record and of course they stopped. But anyway, <clears throat> stove's going to burn out now. It's nice and warm, I'm toasty. And I will see you guys in the morning, unless there's any drama in the night. I'll try and record, but hopefully there's not. See you in the morning.
Good morning, and a beautiful one at that. I've been up probably an hour and a half now. I've had so I packed all the gear away in the tent to begin with, uh, just because it saves on time. I find doing it when I first get up, doing that task. Got the fire going. Had a nice breakfast. The sun is up. Well, actually, it's just started to cloud over, but it was a really beautiful sunrise. Um. Yeah, it, it was a really nice night, really peaceful night. Lots of tawny owls I could hear. Quite a few pheasant this morning, the ones that survived the season. <laughs> but it was a really good night. I'm, I'm super, I really am pleased with this tent. Um, in terms of this is basically a dry run for family camping this summer with my family. P probably not filmed on YouTube much because I, I tend to do a lot of that. I do, I do do it sometimes, but... Um, yeah, I just enjoy family camping trips. We do it every summer, uh, spring, summer, sometimes into autumn. I'd like to do a winter camp actually this year with them. But yeah, I, I'm very pleased with it because it's an ideal space for the kids to run around in and for to have the wood stove if I need to. Uh, two, hopefully, kind of double beds in there. It's, you know, it's big, it's bulky, it's heavy, but it's something that I would drive in. It's not something I would hike in. So my car is about a kilometre from here. So I ferried the gear back and forward to get up here. Super pleased with the fire pit as well. That, is, that has been brilliant to, to cook on and just have a fire in. <laughs> I love the fact that it folds flat as well. I've not seen that before. I, I know these have been around a while. I'm just a bit late to the party, but <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad, I, uh, I'm glad I chose that one. If you guys remember the flat pack cabin, I've got some more modifications that I'm going to make to that, as suggested from some of your the comments in the previous videos. I'll link to that somewhere up here or in the description below, but it's basically my last video on the channel before this. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a really cool project. I've got some more things I'm going to do to that. Probably going to move it around somewhere different in the woods. Uh, but I've also, I've started another project on another one, which is totally different, but it's going to be really cool. It's a little bit more ambitious. Um, slightly bit slightly bigger not too much bigger but it's it's very cool concepts and i don't know if i'm going to be able to pull it off but hopefully i can you can see it over here just mm, where's my finger here i don't have the right lens for it but... it's over there somewhere. staring at me there it goes is flashing so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to film the whole thing so I'll do a quick close out now and say thank you so much for watching really appreciate it um, the one thing I didn't mention at the beginning of the episode which I was totally forgot is we're now going to try for Tuesday uploads so Tuesday UK time around about 5 p.m. Uh, if you that's when I used to historically upload for 10 years and for some reason I had kids and obviously just that upload schedule went all over the place. So Tuesdays, 5 p.m. UK time. To help you remember, just think TA Tuesdays. That's what we're gonna go for, folks. Um, and also, I'm gonna be at the Bushcraft Show this year, which is the 25th to the 27th of May. And it's a great event. I'm gonna have a stand there, probably have some TA axes, TA Trekker pack packs, all sorts of pouches and, and bushcraft bits. It's one of the, probably the only opportunity a year I get to meet my subscribers. So it would be great if you're able to come along um, and have a chat. I'd love to, to chat to you guys because a lot of the time it's just me on my own out here filming. So <laughs> it's quite a lonely job. So it'd be great to meet some of you if you're there. Um, they've actually offered a discount code for you guys. Uh, I think it's TA15 on the Bushcraft Show website, which will get you 15% off your tickets. Um, it, you, can, um, you can camp there for the weekend. You can camp in the woodlands. You can camp in the fields if you've got family. There's quiet camping. There's uh, loads of bushcraft classes on there that you can do and survival skills. Uh, and big names like Ray Mears is going to be there as well. So if you're around on the 20, about the 25th to 27th, I think, or 28th of May um, this year, then yeah, TA15 can get you 15% off your tickets and it'd be a great chance to, to meet you guys. So um, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to put the tent away and see if it will go away. Uh, with some battery left on the camera. I just want to show the deflating of it and see what it's like. Do not die on me. 
This is like the best bit. It's going to be a lot of pressure. Ah, that's what that red valve is for, I reckon. Because there's a lot of pressure if I... Oh, there we go. So you undo it slightly and you push this. And it just lets a tiny bit out. So it doesn't have all that pressure of a bang. It's got red on it, which I guess means danger. Pressure valve. 